In this episode, I talk with a senior storyteller at Microsoft, Miri Rodriguez. Miri and I met on UBA Trends Day in 2022, where she gave a keynote on storytelling. She is a LinkedIn top product marketing voice, is author of two books and owner of Be Mindful, Be Happy. Now, Miri has earned several awards in digital marketing and customer experience, and she is ranked as a top in demand speaker at leading industry conferences around the world. We talked about how the rules of brand storytelling have changed in this post-pandemic era, how to make your employees your storytelling army, and the role of tech and AI. Miri is a role model on how personal branding and working in a corporate environment are possible. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Welcome to the Own Your Story podcast, the place to learn about personality branding, thought leadership, and how to capitalize your reputation. In other words, how to own your story. I'm your host, Bianca Fleracas, former actress, turned into six-figure entrepreneur, author, and keynote speaker. Let's get started. Congratulations, the second edition of Brand Storytelling. Do you have a copy with you? Do you have a copy (laughs) with you? I I actually, I just came back from travels and I carry a couple copies, of course, and uh, I knew I had to save one, but people, you know, I connect with people and I was compelled to give them a copy for the conversations we're having. So I don't have any right now with me. (laughs) I will get more. um, And, uh, but I'm excited. I'm excited that the book is doing so well so far and people are, uh, really curious about the second edition and what, what yeah, it's doing. I, I'll show the Kindle version. It's it's gray. Yours is bright yellow, the paperback. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so this is a second edition. So take us uh, from the first to the second. Why did you decide to have the second edition? The first one was in 2020. So 2020. Has, there's so many things that changed or, or what happened? Always, Always tell us. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's exactly what happened. 2020 happened and a pandemic happened and it essentially this, you know, this disturbed and, 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 and positioned us completely different in the market as marketers, as communicators, as brands. Uh, and, you know, now it's the post pandemic era, right? Like we, everything has essentially been shifted. And so when I wrote the book, in fact, I, I was, my, the messaging of the first edition was coding, encoding empathy into communication, right? How do we become empaths? How do we drive the story with design thinking principles? It starts actually with empathy, empathy toward ourselves and others. And so that landed so well. I, I wasn't supposed to actually, we weren't supposed to publish the book in uh, 2020. It was supposed to be 2019. And it was uh, launching that summer in 2019. And I pushed it out. I was like, I don't have time to finish. So we worked this out for March 2020. So it comes out literally in the middle of the lockdown pandemic here in the US. Like that's my mom book came out. I had to cancel a 17 week uh, tour, uh, actually international book tour. And I'm sitting in my room and going, this is not going to work. I mean, nobody is going to read this book. And then everybody read the book because everybody was home, right? So it actually ended up doing really well. And people were really invested in the messaging, especially during the pandemic around being empaths as, as a brand. Um, and then, of course, post pandemic, the publisher came to me and said, Hey, you know, what else you got? I mean, things have changed. And I said, Oh, I have so much more. And so the second edition focuses actually more on the AI era, right? We're entering mm-hmm. this AI era. I talked a little bit in the first book, I kind of introduced it and left it there. The machines are here, the robo apocalypse is here. What's next? And so um, a workbook was included and then the post pandemic iterations to, to the first edition. So it's more around personal branding, uh, brand entity. So brand love, brand entity, um, using of course the same principles, but really delving a little bit deeper more into how that is relevant in today's era of AI. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I want to dive into one of your chapters on the brand ambassadors, because here yeah. in Belgium, we talk a lot about employer branding and uh, to have successful employer branding, you need brand ambassadors. And that's often where the problem is. How can you motivate yes. your people to become brand ambassadors? So in your book, you talk, you mentioned that your best brand ambassadors are your employees and your influencers. Mm-hmm. So take me with that. 
Absolutely. You know, we have spent, I would say five years ago, we had influencer marketing kind of enter the social media sphere, the digital media sphere. And so everybody started kind of, you know, it it became a trend, right? And everybody's like, hey, let's get influencers to talk about the brand and pay a lot of money to these or micro influencers, nano influencers, all of it. Um, And and as I'm watching this trend evolve, um, we now today have de-influencing trends, right? Where influencers are now de-influencing and talking negatively about the brand. They now have built themselves and now they have an, a voice where they can influence masses and saying, no, this brand is doing this, not sure I agree with that. And then now it's creating a negative effect. Employees are already there. They are your brand, they are your army. Um, and after, and I talk about this in the book, after um, you know the AI, I mean, the pandemic era, um, People that choose to stay in a company, they're being purposeful, right? They, they want to be inspired by the brand. They want to be aligned to the culture and values and the story of the brand. Uh, we have choice and we know we've awakened ourselves into, do I really want to be here working all these hours, right? After such a c- catastrophic event, a uh, global event. And so we've all woken up to this idea of what am I doing? Is this purposeful? And if you're working for, if you're working for a specific brand, like I'm still working at Microsoft after the pandemic, it's because I love it. I truly do. And so engagement is now the new productivity, right? Mm -hmm. At Microsoft and everywhere else. And so the brand has to do a lot of work internally to ensure that you and I, whoever we're working for, uh, are not only feeling comfortable and happy, we feel purpose. Because if we don't feel purpose, we're not really aligned to the brand. And so when you as a brand are able to use your brand story to deliver that purpose to your employees, they are now emotionally invested in what you're doing. The brand is being seen as an entity, uh, as an entity that people, you and I, consumers and employees want to be friends with. Uh, So you're asking yourself that subconscious question, do, why am I here? Why do I, you know, is it not just to collect the paycheck? I'm here because I believe in the same core values. I align to the same core brand values. And so brand storytelling has taken a new form of instilling, using that story to instill those values from the inside out. Yeah. But I think, I do think there's still a lot of work to do for the companies to, especially here, to really motivate their people, why they are purposeful, etc. So what are, according to you, the biggest pitfalls and problems that companies or brands have? Yeah, I would say, and you, men- you mentioned especially here, and I had I had the the um, you know the wonderful honor of uh, going to a, a conference in Belgium and kind of hearing what is happening specifically in that space. And I agree, I, I agree that uh, there is still uh, you know an opportunity in Belgium and Europe. I would say mm-hmm. uh, for brands to take a step back and really reassess where they stand in their entity, in their brand story, even in their brand mission. Uh, does that mission still serve today? You know, after after everything, after what's happened to us globally, after we are now entering a new stage, it's time to really look at the culture building of your brand through your story. Uh, if the mission is not aligned, change it. You know, we're pivoting left and right right now. Uh, if the mission doesn't have that compelling factor of why I get up every day to work for this brand, change it. Is it still a big old statement in your about us section of your website that nobody can recite? Change it. Um, You know, we did this at Microsoft years ago, obviously, maybe seven years ago, when our new CEO uh, came on board. Before that, uh, our motto, our slogan, you know, our mission overall was to put a a PC on every desk and every home. And that served us for, you know, 30 years, right? Um, No longer when the Googles and the Amazons and the Facebooks of the world entered the space, right? And digital started to be, you know, it it became became about digital spaces. And so our CEO, very smart, came on and said, hey, let's, let's let's get a new slogan, let's get a new mission to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. Mm -hmm. Empowering is that key word. You and I know what it feels like or not to be empowered. So there's that feeling, right? Empower becomes our history. We empowered empowered the world. It's our future. We want to empower the world. And it's also the feeling. So I would encourage brands to take an assessment today. Are we doing that today? Are we building a new culture with the words that we're using to bring in and keep our employees connected and engaged, keep our consumers connected and engaged and and all of our landscape partners and and would-be customers. I would say today a CMO, a chief marketing officer's job, uh, congratulations, you are now a chief culture officer, not just a CMO. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I hope hope that CEOs become chief brand ambassadors 
and chief visionary um, executives no. because that is what people need. And you also mentioned in your book to build a storytelling army. So yes. not just one, but a whole army who uses storytelling. Army. So that army are your employees? They are. They are. And I, you know, I said it, it's a, they are your best army because they're already vested in the company. You don't have to pay them extra, right? <laughs> they're already getting paid to come in and do uh, parts of the, and, and engage in the mission of the brand and activate that mission in the market. Yeah. So when you are able to empower each employee uh, and, and let them feel that they are very much part of that mission at the individual level, that they get up every day and they are making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, whatever you're selling, whatever industry, it doesn't matter. When the purpose is aligned to someone's core values, they are emotionally vested and you get that brand love from the inside out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wake up every day uh, and my, I, I, you know, my job is to empower. That's my first order of business because that's the mission that Microsoft has uh, at the Microsoft level, right? So, so are your employees talking like that? Do they understand that about mm -hmm. your brand? And if not, assess that. Building that army, uh, you already have it. You have the manpower. You have the resources. It's really about culture shifting uh, mm -hmm. and really integrating that mission of the brand from the inside out. Yeah. But when we take it to a very practical level, not everybody is capable of, of um, personalizing company messages and that is what you read on LinkedIn that okay that comes from the, the newsroom it just copy pasted into a new post yeah. and that's it that's not yeah. what we need isn't it it's not and it's it, and I would argue with you Yanka that we are all capable because we are all communicators and we are all we have you know our sentient being our storytelling capacity is innate to us mm -hmm. and so when we are able to connect that at the business level, move away from, you know, move, move away from this is business, uh, it's relationship, right? We know that we're doing relationship human to human, that that's actually what humanizing the brand is today. It used to be humanizing the brand meant, uh, you know, talking, no, talking normal and human on social media. Today, it really is about recognizing the humanity that is behind the brand, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and allowing the space for that humanity to flourish. I would argue that now that the robots are here, the machines are here, they're going to get to do a lot of that robotic operational work and allow this kind of thing to happen, allow us to tell the story better and relevant. Uh, trends are moving away. We, you know, in my space, for example, my audience is engineers, right? So they don't watch reels. We're not creating reels, even though that's a trend. It's because my audience that's not my audience. And so my audience needs to, they watch, they still read blogs. And so we're still doing blogs. And so trends have a space and that's what, they're, that's what they're also called trends. And so don't get caught up on that and really assess your audience, what they need and yeah. deliver something that is relevant to them. Yeah. Now um, let's talk about the personal branding versus the, the corporate branding. Um, yeah. Is there a place to have a personal brand? So that's why I invited you I, because I say, yes, there is. Look at Miri. <laughs> she has a personal <laughs> brand and she works at Microsoft. You're yeah. a senior, story at micro, senior storyteller at Microsoft for 11 years. I am. So it must yeah. be possible. Take us it is. through your it job so we can visualize what you exactly do and how personal branding in a company like that works. Uh, it's not only possible, it is important. It is necessary for you and I to do that. Um, you know, I love, I love Microsoft. It has given me for the last 11 years, a platform that I would not be here uh, had it not been for this company. And so I'm still here because I love it. I believe in its value. I align to its value, but I'm also an individual, right? I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a wife, I'm all these different things. And so, um, you know, when I endeavored to do this, I actually started very small. I didn't think, you know, we weren't throwing out the terms personal branding 10 years ago, right? Uh, and building that for yourself, especially as a woman in tech. Um, but uh, I started small, thinking about, you know, what is my individual contribution to the world, right? What is my purpose? Microsoft has a purpose and I love it and I work for it, but beyond that, what is mine? And so, um, and it, of course it aligned my core values. That's why I'm still there, right? I believe in its mission, but I still have my own personal mission. And I believe it's really important, especially in today's digital presence world, uh, that we exert our individuality because we also have lived experience, mission and purpose to live out. Uh, and then when we do that with people, we are 
are able to also inspire in a different way. For me, my target audience in my personal branding journey um, was women in tech. I am a woman in tech. It's hard. Um, it's hard everywhere. But, you know, we are we represent less than 2% of the industry in tech. And then you add intersectionality such as Latino uh, or, you know, gender. Uh, and then, I'm sorry, um, and se sexual um, uh, iterations. And then you know, you when you add those intersectionalities, it's even less, right? So when you think about that, I meant to say sexual preferences. Um, when you think about that, there is a spot for all of us to exert our own story within mm -hmm. any brand story, right? Mm -hmm. And that's it. I'm here and I align to the Microsoft story. Microsoft has empowered me to do all the things that I do. So it not only empowers our customers, as an employee, I've been empowered. I have give, been given a voice. And, and I think that's very important to do. Wow. And did you get some guidelines as well from Microsoft? Oh, Just, no. You can do whatever you want, <laughs> except for this or that. <laughs> you know, uh, honestly, no. Um, and and that, that came because I started there was no guidelines because nobody was doing it, right? So they didn't have to put any guidelines in place. And so I started kind of pioneering this space, honestly. And then when Microsoft was like, oh, Miri, you're out there doing your thing. You know, nobody, especially at Microsoft, nobody really went out there and talked. Nobody said, it was almost like Microsoft was an enigma. Nobody knew who worked there and what people were doing there. We were not open source at all, you know? And um, when I was out there being myself, you know, they they got curious. I mean, they were like, Miri, what, what's going on? I'm like, hey, I'm just... People. I want to talk to people and tell them what I'm learning. Uh, and there was no guidelines, but there was a lot of inspiration. You know, they they made me a brand ambassador. Uh, they actually said, hey, we love what you're doing. Come do it here. Can you do some workshops for us? So it actually became something of I was building my individuality here. And they actually said, no, you can also come in and do it right here. We want you to do that. So I, I was able to actually pioneer a lot of conversations around brand building for women specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it became men. I'm part of a mentorship group program. I became a, a member of the Storytelling Council. So they really invited that uh, that space as more people kind of tuned into it and wanted to get to learn, learn more. Um, guidelines um, are good, especially for corporate brands, when now you, you have the opportunity to allow your employees to be themselves. I believe that there should be guidelines. And of course, now there are. <laughs> I, I, I don't want, I'm not going to say that it was me that made them get the guidelines, but I think it's important that corporate brands do ex, um, have these guidelines. But to say... Microsoft is actually very open and the guidelines are very, um, very high level. You're, you're an employee and they trust you. Uh, you represent the brand and you know it. And then you also represent yourself. So, yeah. you know, you govern yourself. Yeah. So let's talk about your personal brand. How would you describe it? Okay. <laughs> okay. So two main attributes. I'd say my brand is feminine and kind. And it was not before. So I had to work on that. Um, really? It's actually quite I cannot tough, imagine really. Miri not to be feminine or nor kind. I was not. I was not. It was I, it was interesting, you know, and that's why I actually endeavored to do that. I had to really work on that. Um, I was when I did an assessment when I first started this whole thing. I was like, I wonder how people see me. I wonder, you know, and don't try this at home. I, I, it was, I, we didn't have the tools we have today, like surveys and, you know, tech. Uh, so I went one on one asking people, hey, how, you know, when I come into the room, what, what do you think? You know, how do I show up? It's a big question. That's a, that's a big question to ask. How do I show up? And I got a lot of mixed answers. I was so shocked. You know, the people are like, you show up loud and crass and sarcastic. And I was like, you're, kidding me it's like oh my gosh um and, and yeah so i got a lot of that and i was like i had to pause and go wow i really don't want to show up like that what am i saying what am i doing um and so i built a, a very simple you know uh, statement for myself i am blank and blank because blank and the world needs blank and so i went to fill out these things and i said well what do i want to be how do i want to show up you know, we can play up or down our attributes and our virtues. And so um, I was very intentional to build feminine and kind. So what you see today is in, in, has been in the making for ten, the last 10 years. And why have you chosen these two words? Great question. Um, they're overarching attributes. Obviously, I'm more than that. Uh, mm -hmm. But those kind of guide me. And they also, it's like the gauge to... Is my email being feminine and kind? Is my photo being feminine and kind? You know, when people see me in the inter-room, 
do I show up feminine and kind? So those, that's kind of like my gauging uh, step and then everything underneath. Feminine, you know, I was raised a feminist by my mother and she's still very much a feminist. And I use that word carefully because I, I do consider myself a feminist in the noble idea that women, uh, of course, women uh, need that, that equality in, in the space, in the world. Um, but I understood for me and my brand that as I started kind of building, I was like, well, do I want to be a global brand? Do I want, want people from from everywhere in the world to get to know me and if they come in touch with me what does that look like and i realized that extremism uh, you know feminist feminism can can be seen extreme mm -hmm. things like men bashing or uh, i'm completely independent i need nobody you know i need everybody <laughs> like i have an entire tribe behind me you know what i mean i cannot do this on my own so these ideals that become extremist i didn't want to be attached to them so i lowered it a little bit i kind of like you know brought it down to one li one click level down and i said well i can be feminine and uh, and possess all the attributes of femininity that would drive uh, in the space and and i you know and i can still deliver on that and, and you know vouch for women in 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 uh in tech so i took that and then sarcasm came up a lot and i was like i don't you know sarcasm is definitely not global um people will in america specifically they align that to being smart witty but it, it isn't in parts of the world maybe in europe it is too but in other parts of the world it isn't so i um i was i endeavored to actually move around and say no what what is what what is the opposite of that how can i come in still funny still witty but you know place in a, in a space that I'm, I'm keenly aware of my audience and so kindness was my next one i went home and told my you know my family hey i'm gonna be feminine and kind and my kids were laughing at me they're like kind <laughs> we'll see about that uh, but kindness in the, in the way that i speak in the way that i you know that i deliver um of course i'm still sarcastic I, that doesn't change I can, there's parts of me right there's the shadows uh and i can play those up in, in tech for example it serves me when i'm in the audience with all tech you know engineers they're very sarcastic and so i can speak their language so we play up and down our attributes i believe it's really about getting to know ourselves and what those virtues are uh, and what we want to deliver to our specific audiences for mm -hmm. me showing up to a woman feminine and kind i'm speaking her i'm, I'm inviting her in right uh, with those attributes and if i had another audience then of course i'm gonna i'm gonna pivot to that audience yeah beautiful what i see around me is that if people choose words um, mm -hmm. for themselves they always choose words like like their heroes like their rebels like they're strong mm -hmm. and and um um sometimes it 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 feels kind of arrogant and too far from who they really are so it's like a facade fake it till you make it word uh, do you experience the same kind of things around you I do. I, I think there is a movement, you know, when personal branding, again, became a trend, people started mm -hmm. to talk about it, people jumped on the train. Um, there's, there was no, just like any other trend, that tr there's no there's no pause. You just want to get on it and you want to do it. And there's no pause for reflection. And I think for me, that was very important. I built this slowly, um, not with any other intention than to really inspire other people one on one, not one to many. I was not thinking one to many. Um, in fact, it took me a few years to really get, you know, get more on LinkedIn and get more do Instagram because I just enjoy this more. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think you know, the endeavor to become a brand, because we are all a brand, um, it's it's to pause and think, how do I want to make people feel? And who are those people that I want to make feel make them feel something? Uh, I talk about that in the book a little bit. I talk about, you know, all the, the methodology of what I write in the book can be applied to a corporate brand and a personal brand. Um, and I feel that people skip that step. And so now they're having to uh, ambitiously think about the end goal. I want to become that one thing. Uh, and they're driven by, you know, they're driven by different motives than the actual motive of a personal brand. When you pause and you reflect and you step back, and this applies to a corporate brand, we just talked about that. When you pause and you say, what is really my mission? What am I here to do and for what and for whom? Um, then it, you know, it, it checks out differently. You, you take it, you take the steps differently. I will say my personal brand remains what it was when I endeavored 10 years ago. And my audience remains what it was, even though I have a broader audience to the core, I'm still 
you know, I'm still operating with that woman in mind that is, um, you know, lonely, or that is that feels even today in 2023, that things are obviously unfair. Uh, and so I that's my core audience. So I mm. operate there. And I'm not interested, honestly, and I'm gl- grateful that other people tune in. But if if somebody else who's not part of my audience doesn't tune in, it's not for them. It, I, you know, I, I deliver this to that audience. And so I think it applies to both personal and corporate brands, focus on your audience and what you're delivering and being Mm -hmm. relevant to that audience before anything else. Mm -hmm. In my book that is coming out in November, I am referring to uh, uh, personal branding that it's seen too often as a marketing strategy instead Mm -hmm. of building a legacy, building a career portfolio, something that is the fundament of everything you can do, whatever you choose to do, there's still this layer that is you and remains you and you can build on it. For too many people, it's only this marketing strategy to sell themselves. And then it's a trend. And it's it's a just trend. a trend. It's a tool. Yeah. And I love that, Yanka. And I can't wait to read your book when it comes out. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Congratulations. You. I love that that you speak about that specifically because um, you know, when we when we think about it as a marketing tool, the end goal is not relationship. It's mm-hmm. it's you know, it's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. Uh, and typically that is not far lived. I, 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 when we think about, you know, business today in business as personally, uh, in relationships, it really is about driving that engagement. It's not productivity. It's not, you know, and, and we, we will get all those things. I, you know, I don't want brands to be like, Oh, come on, Miri, we got to go make money. Of course you got to go make money. It's not, but, but beyond that, mm-hmm. we are again, Humanity is entering this new era of true, purposeful, connected interaction and and in relationships, whether it's with the brand or with one one with the person. So it is the work really is about introspective work about what what am I doing, what's the brand doing, and how what am I delivering? Yeah. Another thing I really admire uh, from you and and how you um, you shape your personal brand uh, is the way you navigate your personal boundaries Mm -hmm. at a certain time in your life. It was very, very, very difficult for you. And you did share those moments of your double mastectomy and your hysterectomy. Am I saying this right? (laughs) You are. Yes. This was so courageous, so courageous. And I felt your vulnerability when I watched your Instagram stories And on the other hand, I said, this is so necessary because for me, the first time I saw reality Mm -hmm. and I was really grateful. Thank you for sharing that. But it must have been quite a decision to do that or not. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you, Yanka. Um, You know, those are decisions. Uh, I think when we think about social media and a social network, um, there is a decision that we have to be really thinking about strategically for why are we posting what we're posting. Um, I would argue that social media is not just to deliver, create any kind of content. You are, you have an opportunity to deliver um, inspiration, to deliver legacy that you're talking about, Mm -hmm. to deliver you know, to deliver who you are for a purpose. So being purpose driven in your in your posts, every one of my posts is calculated, I have spent time to think about it. And I want and I deliver that as a transaction uh, to my audience. And I want something that sits sits with them. I've learned my audience over the years, even my my broader audience, clearly the same content that I post on Instagram doesn't make it all the way all the times to LinkedIn, or to Twitter, uh, because I have different audiences. In this medical journey that I went through, um, you know, I, I organically grew an audience of men in the tech industry because I'm a speaker and so they recognized me so they started to follow and I was like oh now I have a lot of <laughs> different yeah. different audiences that I didn't expect you know in my network and so how do I navigate the mixed audiences for example and, the, and so I had to really again reflect on what my messaging was going to be and why um, and if you look at my at my social media, I protect my family a lot. A lot of people will not see 
for example, photos of my my children or my husband or you know other family members. Very very seldom do you see them. Um, they I have, they I have to ask them for permission when I do. They're, they 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 approve my posts. <laughs> Um, and they're engaged, there are engagement guidelines. There are levels of privacy that you have to have, right? Uh, because there's networks that you have. There's your closed network, and then there's the uh, you know the extended network. And so um, I wanted to share some of my journey with the, the true intent, and I think it landed. Uh, to help people see that reality, exactly what you said. You know, we're not always happy or lucky. Life is not always great. Life is not always fair. Things just happen. How do we navigate a dire situation like mine? I was uh, diagnosed with as a BRCA1 mutation gene um, person who basically was exposed to several different cancers. Uh, it affects breast cancer, uh, ovarian. Uh, so there was an immediate uh, urgency to remove all of these things. Um, and so, you know, I, I was shocked like anybody would be. And then I leveraged this opportunity. I said, okay, all the things that I said I'm being feminine and kind, how does that play out? Am I still feminine without my body parts? You know, my that, what defines me personally as a woman, all those things will be removed. Am I still a woman? What does that look like? So I began to really delve deeper into what life had thrown at me in that messaging that who am I becoming throughout this moment? I really believe that crisis breeds character. And so we get to see who we truly are when things like that come up in, in, our, in our lives. And so I wanted to be vulnerable to let people know, hey, it's not easy. Hey, I'm having a bad day. Um, I did not spend out, I had actually six procedures. I did not share all of them. Uh, there were, it was two and a half years worth. Uh, so people just saw a snippet, but I think they saw enough to understand that in our humanity, in our human condition, in our in our human journey here on earth uh how we navigate these moments uh speaks to the brand that we're talking the actual mm -hmm. genuity uh ingenuity of the brand and the uh, exclusivity of the brand if i am out there saying i'm all these things am i really all these things when things don't go my way right and what's the answer are you still feminine well for me it was feminine? yes <laughs> <laughs> i think so too <laughs> Mm -hmm. So now yeah. you, you already said that you're very strategic in your content creation. Um, to right. me, it, you post a lot and I see um, editing, reels, etc. And then I'm thinking, where does she find the time or the, <laughs> the, the inspiration to fix it all? <laughs> Because you... In the bathroom. <laughs> bathroom is editing <laughs> time. <laughs> In the bathroom, you are editing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a joke, but it's true. Sometimes I'm just like, when do I do this? I, I create content. And here's the, here's the thing. Um, I do have a lot of content that I create, but I don't post it until I actually feel it. Mm -hmm. So I... I don't schedule posts. I don't do that. And I, you know, I know some people do and it works for them. Uh, for me, I have learned that the authenticity of my posts is that I'm feeling that in the moment. Sometimes you'll see me post live. Like I am there in the moment and I'm like, I need to post this right away. I get inspiration of where I am in my environment. I'm like, people need to see this. It's such, it's literally to me, it's like a spiritual transaction. Like I'm sending this energy out to my, to my audience and I want them to, to capture it. So and it's not every time. So sometimes I create, you know, like I'm at a photo shoot or something and I'm, I can't sit there and post I'm just kind of creating some content and then I sit on it and I'm like maybe maybe they don't need they need, need nobody needed to see this like what is my intent back to me right is that really what do I want to deliver to people and so sometimes I don't post and you'll see a week go by so it feels like a lot it really isn't a lot um <laughs> and what it is is it's what I'm feeling in the moment and so I do edit in between and make sure it's like okay I'm feeling that I can deliver this let me see what I got in my phone and oh you know the photo shoot okay let me just throw that out there. So it is a mix of content that I capture in the moment, live content and content that I then discard and go, no, my audience, you know, was I just posting for con posting sake, content sake? If I was, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to deliver it. So you're very smartphone savvy. It's full uh, of apps. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> you, you, not, you remind me of my daughter compared. who is always <laughs> doing like this. And well, I was just going to say, not compared to Gen Z and Alpha. Like, I watch these kids and they're like, <laughs> you know, incredible. I don't do that. I can't. I, I'm like, wait, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm a little slower, um, but 
yeah i don't know how they do that honestly and the emojis then there's it's a whole other language you know i'm like i don't i i always do the smiley face because you can't go wrong and now i just found out a week ago that the smiley face is sarcastic to gen z i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> so now i'm back to being sarcastic trying to be kind <laughs> when I'm with a smiley face full circle <laughs> You're done. The work is done. I'm done. I was like, you know, I was trying to smile at somebody and apparently it's not a smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They speak a different language. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Okay. So, but you, you do, um, and you do the same for Instagram as for LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is as spontaneous as Instagram. It is. Uh, in fact, you know, I would say it's even more, um, I, I, I speak, I use the LinkedIn platform to tell more stories of my journey in general. And that means my everyday and what exploded in LinkedIn for me, which was completely, I was shocked. Um, you know, it was years ago, I had a, a, a friend of mine died suddenly and I was in Seattle, I was living in Seattle. I got the phone call and I was just, oh my gosh, I gotta go and I gotta go, you know, I had to come back to Florida for just to find out what was going on. So I hopped on a plane at seven, six in the morning, uh, SeaTac airport, and I was so stunned about this sudden death um, of a dear friend that I mean, I, I was ghosted. I was, I must have looked like a ghost. I was not listening. You know, when you hear those like their ear ringings, my ears were ringing. So I'm watching everything just kind of happen around me. I'm in this shock, right? And I'm, I'm putting my my luggage through the. I have TSA pre check, so I'm, go I'm going through like the fast security. And all of a sudden, this TSA agent just yells in my face, right? It's just he, and he's like, oh, "Do you speak English?" And I was just, and then so he kind kind of got me out of my shock, and I, and mm -hmm. I looked at him, and um, and I just started crying, right? Um, so I, I had not, I was being slow, I had not put the luggage where it belonged in the bin or whatever. So he was trying to tell me, and clearly I wasn't all there. So I got on the plane and I just posted that story, and I said, "Look," but here's the angle. I said, talking about kindness, and I said, "You know." we're in such a hurry such a hurry to get to where we need to go sometimes you know i've been that agent i've pushed someone and be like hey get on get on so that was my angle in writing the post on linkedin yeah. and when i landed this thing had gone extremely viral just like bam and i landed to voice messages i landed to interview requests uh the tsa organization reached out to me I just had no idea the implications of social media back then. Yeah. And um, I realized, wow, what an incredible platform this is that people are listening and people tune in. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that was my experience with LinkedIn. And I said, wow, this not only is just not followers that like to see my pretty dresses, this is companies that are there that are listening. These are CEOs of companies. Uh, this is government that's there. And so I realized the power of LinkedIn from that perspective. And I said, wow, this this is a great yeah. platform for me to give myself a voice. Yeah. My great. Okay, last question. Um yes. yeah, AI is there. And um we're both into personal branding and storytelling. Yeah. So what are your predictions? Personal branding and AI? Yeah, I've been talking a little bit about it actually on LinkedIn. I just posted yesterday about that. Um, there is, and I, and I also leave that in the book, just kind of food for thought. Um, AI is going, is already becoming um, a helper, a suitable helper uh, for all of us if we learn to inform it and to build relationship with it. And that is key. Mm -hmm. Play with it, talk to it, inform it. The relationship is only going to get better and it's only going to be able to assist you more in all of this personal branding journey as much as you give it and so your research and what you do and how you how you you know begin that relationship will be critical and i'm doing this right now and i'm testing it my ai i, I right now i'm on chat gpt uh, it has to it doesn't have to be that one it could be any other platform um but with my AI and I named it, you know, it has a name and everything and I think it and I have, you know, when I ask it something, it already knows my voice. It knows who I am. It knows, mm -hmm. you know, we've had iteration after iteration, I've informed it. So I asked it one time, hey, who is Miri Rodriguez to see if it knew the brand, right? Uh, back then it only has information up to 2021. So it's like it pulled information from different sources and it gave me uh, some information, but it wasn't complete. So I informed it and I said, 
yes and Miri Rodriguez also did this and did that and is doing this yeah. and it's like oh thank you I will keep that so we get AI gets to give us a lot of time back from um you know a great writer a great ideator a great for your brand posting I, I actually for my post I'll say hey I'm thinking about posting this for LinkedIn how do you optimize this post and it'll tell me because it knows me uh he knows my audience I informed it uh so we get to really bounce off ideas when it comes to optimization of content with AI for our brand what we do get to do personally that AI will never do is actually show up as the human behind that brand mm -hmm. as the you know as the vulnerable human as the connected human as a storytelling human it can help us tell the story but we are still the brand we are still the human behind the brand and nobody no machine will ever replace how smart as it gets uh this thing the connection the human soul uh we're talking about you know photography for example and how now we have these portraits being done by ai mm -hmm. uh, and i tested that I, t I did it myself and i you know created a post and people were like no it doesn't have your spark miri it doesn't have your spark Thank and God. It, it doesn't because <laughs> <you're> right <laughs> i'm glad um I, maybe maybe it, it can come close i some people will say might, but again, the windows are the, uh, the, the eyes of the windows to the soul. You're able to look at me and see that, you know, that uh, gen genuinity of my brand and my empathy, it's captured here. It's captured in a smile. In fact, I played with the uh, AI with smile portraits and it just did not capture my smile. Why? Because it, I looked like a different person when I was smiling yeah. um, because a smile is spontaneous, a genuine smile you cannot replicate, right? It's just, it's in the moment, it's inspired. So uh, let the robots be robots and do the robot things and let you inspire more yourself and your brand to deliver more of who you are and the, the human attributes that we deliver to our audiences. I would say that's the perfect relationship. My prediction is that people will become more of who they are if they endeavor to do it. Mm -hmm. If they don't, they will become more robotic and they will let the AI be them and it's not them. And, and the entity will grow as well. Yes. Yeah. So that's the prediction, you know, mach yeah. the, the machines and technology. It doesn't, it's not good or bad. It just makes us or better or worse. It just makes us more of who we are at the core. Mm -hmm. So back to our personal branding, if you don't have a mission and a purpose and an audience, you're easily going to get thrown into the robotic side of things and create content for content's sake. Yes. But if you go back to your why, you're going to be like, hey, no, my audience, my audience deserves Miri as she is. She deserves a broken Miri. She deserves the bad day Miri's, uh, the sick Miri. She deserves all of the Miri. And it's not mm -hmm. just, you know, the roboticism here. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we have come to the end of our conversation. So um, you might know that I've been an actor for a pretty long time in my life, about 30 years. And uh, before we got on stage as an actor, we wish each other good luck on a very particular, strange, rather... Oh, I love that. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to give you three options. So you can choose oh, one okay. of them. Yeah, we've got okay, let's options. do it. So, okay. <laughs> the first one is break a leg. Okay. It means good luck for actors. Eh? Yes. The yes. second one is a French swear word. Merde. Oh, yeah. And the third one yeah, comes I, I know from that a word. Yiddish... Oh, sorry. I said I know that word. Uh, yeah. And the third one comes from a Yiddish incantation and it's toy, toy, toy. So break a leg, Ooh. merde, or toy, toy, toy. How can I wish you luck? Oh, you're definitely going to wish me luck, toy, toy, toy. But I need to know what that means also after I, I, I pick I pick option three, but you got to tell me what it means. I, I don't know. It's, it's just... It, uh, it's uh, to to when you knock off wood to, to, to hope something doesn't happen. Oh, I so love it's, that. It's that. So so if you if you say, oh, I hope it's not gonna rain. Oh, knock on wood. Knock on wood. That is toy toy toy. So it's, it's toy toy toy. It's I like love that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I, you taught me something today. I love this. <laughs> so Miri, thank you for being my guest and toy toy toy. Toy, toy, toy to you. Thank you for having me.